Military watches are cool. You know what's cooler? A watch that soldiers bought with their own money instead because it was tougher than the military issue. The war was Vietnam and the watch, the Seiko Willard. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> Wait, no, uh, Nutella, yeah. I love hazelnuts. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. Do you have a watch related question like, what's the best diver for a thousand dollars? Well, posted on watchcrunch.com, a modern platform that we built for talking watches and let the hive mind of the watch community help you find the answer. So I was planning a trip and I wanted to bring a rugged watch that I wouldn't worry about getting knocked around. Now everybody at this point will say in unison, G-Shock. But you know, I wanted something mechanical, something with history and that's interesting to look at. And for that, enter the Seiko Willard. So the SBP237 lives in a family of Seiko Willard reissues. The name is of course inspired by Martin Sheen's character from Apocalypse Now. These include the Green Willard, which was a close second for me, and a number of limited editions like a Blue Dial, a Black PVD, amongst others. But let's cover why I think the Willard is the sweet spot in Seiko's diver lineup, why I like the 237 the most, but also a few little niggles about this watch that bothered me and how I went about improving them. So first, this is a unique watch. The cushion-shaped case with its asymmetrical crown guard at four looks nothing like anything out of Switzerland. It actually looks more like a space saucer from some retro futuristic movie to me. But it was the rugged original 6105 that found its way onto the wrists of many soldiers who bought them at their postal exchange stores on bases in Vietnam and inspired many variants of the Seiko turtle that followed. In recent years, Seiko has tried to elevate the Pro Specs watch line, which stands for Professional Specifications. And with the reintroduction of the Willard, we got a step up in materials and finishing compared with the Turtles. Now, I've had a King Turtle, so I speak from experience that the details make a big difference. For example, the case here has a hardness coating, which gives a darker hue, looking almost titanium-like. The crystal is an AR coated sapphire with a sharply cut bevel running around the edge. The bezel has a finer coin edge and the entire thing is just better put together. The build quality is more on par with a luxury brand, somewhere I would say between an Oris and a Tudor. The highlight has to be the style. It's got applied square indices instead of printed, and here they're filled with a khaki colored loom that is not so heavy handed as to offend the sensitive souls amongst us. The 237 would be the variant of choice for me because I feel like this is the best faithful recreation of the 1970s watch from Seiko. Thus, the aluminum bezel also has a matte finish with faded looking numerals, and these subtle hints of aging gives this watch a bit of new old stock look, which I love. Now, despite the little bit of Fotina, Seiko's Lumi Bright delivers a torch-like blue glow that never ceases to impress. Now, one lovely departure from convention is the use of a textured dial. Here we get a beautiful gray sunburst finish with a ruffled surface pattern looking almost like a mild version of the white birch. The subtle depth this affords the dial really classes up this otherwise rugged watch. We also get loom filled stick hands, which seem simple, but they're actually beveled down the center with one side that is brushed and the other polished. The second hand has what enthusiasts call a stoplight tip, and the pop of red is just enough to set things off on the style. Guys, please take a sec, drop a like for this video. Also, uh, announcement for today, the winner of our Longines Legend Diver giveaway from a couple videos ago was, drum roll please, 10 and two watches. So let's congratulate Benjamin. Thank you for being part of the Crunch community. I hope you enjoy this watch for years to come. And don't worry, if you didn't win, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next giveaway. So many people who are not familiar with Seiko divers will write them off as too big. For example, this Willard has a case diameter of 43 millimeters, which on paper I should have 
no business wearing on my six and a half inch wrist. However, because there are no lugs, rather a notch is cut into the case to accommodate the strap. At just 46 millimeters lug to lug, it actually fits very comfortably. Seiko ships two fabric straps, which are beautiful, but also quite thick. So in an effort to reduce the already thick 13 millimeter case, I've taken a couple of measures. First, I have the watch on a ribbed NATO strap from my friend David at the Strap Tailor. Now, if you like it ribbed for your pleasure, but you don't care for the flimsy hardware from cheapest NATO straps, well, this is the ticket. He offers them in a selection of colors and they come with hefty sign buckles and substantial keepers. The next move I took was a little bit more extreme. I swapped the original case back for a slim case back from Nomoki, helping to take another half mil off the thickness. Another frequent complaint with these is bezel misalignment, and this one unfortunately did not escape that fate. The inserts on this 120 click bezel, which has a very firm and satisfying action, I might add, is about a quarter click off. Now this, might not bother some, but I am too OCD to let it stand. So here I remove the inserts and use some contact cement to affix the arrow so that it points directly at 12. Okay, now I'm gonna go wash my hands for 10 minutes and then flip the light switch on exactly 12 times. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, the last thing that we have to talk about is the movement. I might sound a little hypocritical here because I spent the last video trashing the 6R31-35 for its poor accuracy, low beat rate in the new King Seiko, but hear me out. The King Seiko name is synonymous with accuracy and precision. The Willard is synonymous with being a wrecking ball of a watch that can go under 200 meters of muddy water and keep ticking. So with now 70 hours power reserve, I think we can tolerate the 6R in the Willard because they're both kind of like blue collared workhorses. Now around the time of this release, Seiko also gave us the SBP 239, which is based on another one of Seiko's icons. It's first dive watch, the famous 62 mass. However, I found the Fotina on that one just a bit too heavy handed. So I must say, if you want a vintage inspired premium Seiko diver, especially if you can get the Willard at a discount like I did, I feel like this is the sweet spot for your next beach vacation watch. But what do you think? Let me know what your choice for a vacation watch would be on watchcrunch.com. I'll put a link to the discussion in the pinned comments below. As always, stay crunchy, and I'll see you in the next one.